So the Kevin, seven key budget concepts are appropriations, gross basis budgeting, warrant notice, which just means that in order to have a legal budget, you have to give notice to the public that you're going to propose specific appropriations, that there's no spending without an appropriation, that appropriations generally, the standard operating procedure is, all appropriations lapse at the end of the fiscal year, unless there's some reason why they wouldn't lapse. And we'll talk a little bit about when there's no lapsing. Um, and then there's the authority of the select board to transfer appropriations. Uh, and one of the things only I would say is I, you know, I know that people really like this no versus no means no and zero out all line items, but I think the best, most important tool a budget or a town, budget committee or a town can have is always leave a placeholder in a line item. That gives flexibility to the governing body to move money around as necessary. There was, I kind of couldn't believe it, there was a, a, a library trustees who called me up the other day and said, oh, there's no problem with the fact that we decided to put a budget out that had zero dollars appropriated to buy books. And I said, uh, yeah, I, but he, he said, but it's gross-based budgeting. It, it, we're okay. I said, no, no. You've just approved a budget that has no money appropriated to buy books, and you're a library. <laughs> and so, no, it doesn't work that way. You cannot spend money that year on books. You have to always leave a placeholder, and a dollar is always an appropriate way to have that placeholder so your governing body can have the authority to move money when it's necessary because bottom line is the budget committee doesn't run the town. It's the, it's the, it's the select board or the school district. Um, and then, of course, the 10 percent limitation. You can't spend more than 10 percent of the amount recommended by the budget committee. That's the overall amount. And there's some dollars that are come out, like there's fixed amounts that come out of the 10 percent calculation. And Barbara can probably recite that better than I. But after you take those fixed numbers out, you have a number, and it's, that number cannot be exceeded by 10 percent. Um, so another key concept, that key concept is the fact that there's an appropriation, which is the legislative body saying, like that uh, budget for that library, they're going to set aside a specific sum of money for that purpose. And in that particular library budget, they decided to put zero for books. But you've got to have, you know, the, the town meeting, there's got to be an appropriation to spend money for that purpose. And it's an authorization to spend money, not the actual spending. So it's basically saying, we have agreed that there will be money spent this year on this subject. Now, the dollars come later. Um, and then appropriations, there's a number of terms to keep in mind. There's raise the money. Raise means we're going to identify the source of the dollars. Either it's going to be from general taxation. It's going to be from borrowing. It's going to be from capital reserve fund. That's the raise part. Uh, appropriate is to set it apart, to say we're going to raise and appropriate from the capital reserve fund, a set of money aside from that capital reserve fund, which we've saved before, to buy the fire truck this year. And the purpose under RC 32.3 is a goal or aim to be accomplished through the expenditure of public funds. And then it's, the reference is not limited by uh, the MS-6 or the MS-7. And I'm sure Barbara can remind me what these two forms are. Those are the um, DRA budget forms, and uh, one of them is if you have a budget committee, and the other is if you don't have a budget committee. However, I, I believe that they have renumbered all of their forms, yeah. so I think there's now a lot more numbers and uh, letters before their forms. But basically, you do have a budget form that gets submitted to DRA and has that column for the budget committee, it's column for the selectmen's recommended. So. Um, the point here is that DRA has these sort of broad categories, uh, and that's just the summary. So, for example, there may be patriotic purposes, where you may have budget line items under that for certain activities that you're having, but their form pretty much has those broad categories, police department, fire department, ambulance, patriotic purposes, general administration, and that's what those forms are. Okay, so I'm going to have to speed up just a little bit. I apologize because we, we, I did want to make sure you understand we did commit to do this in two hours, so I may speed up a little bit. But again, uh, you do have the PowerPoint in your materials, so if I go a little fast, remember it's still there. Um, so uh, appropriations, we have to talk a little bit about, has to be for a public purpose. Um, so uh, you can only spend money for a public purpose purpose, and that's as indicated in our Constitution and by statute. School boards are limited to the support of public schools. Village districts have to be for the purpose for which the 
district is created. So you have village districts that do water, some do sewer, some do fire protection. Village districts have different multiple purposes. Um, now, public purposes uh, is not necessarily the same as a public benefit. A general benefit, public benefit to the public still might count, uh, might not count, but it still could count. So I guess I'll give you an example, and I've gotten these questions many years. In the, my town of Bow, every year the select board sets aside some money to spend to appropriate to a local um, uh, welfare organizations. So they will appropriate a certain amount of money for the uh, Visiting Nurse Association mm -hmm. or for uh, the, uh, the provision of uh, health care through a local doctor's group to uh, elderly patients. That still can be a, pu a sufficient public purpose because, you know, one of the things you can always say when you're dealing with a social, social welfare organization, if these services are provided through the Visiting Nurse Association, you may help avoid someone becoming destitute, and a destitute person is someone you may have to help through local assistance, local welfare. So there is a public benefit in those circumstances, but it does have to be generally a public purpose for the spending of public money. Um, you may, again, the idea here, as I've already expressed, the main purpose has to promote the public welfare um, and the obligations to benefit the municipality, but you do have to avoid um, situations where you're only benefiting a private person. And this is a common issue in some towns where, you know, over time, for whatever reason, the select board members might get their road plowed. And I always <laughs> suspected that to be true, and I was told that's <laughs> not true. The select board does not have their roads plowed. Or, you know, or you have, you know, there there is a number of situations I remember not too long ago in Concord where they really had to narrow their plowing budget, and they realized uh, through mistake or by accident over the years they were plowing, plowing some private roads, and they had to let people know, wait a minute, this is a private road, we can't plow it anymore. We had to draw back their plowing budget to only public purposes. So um, that is an area that can sometimes come up, but I know the select board does not have the road plow. Um, <laughs> so uh, one of the things that you'll see when you talk about setting aside money for a specific purpose is how should warrant articles be worded. And we'll talk about this specifically. But one of the things you don't want to do, and I had a selectman the other day, I, we were right in the middle of doing our local officials workshops, and we had a selectman uh, in Bethlehem who brought to our attention, you know, the town meeting voted in the year 2000 to raise and appropriate $10,000 for a capital reserve fund to buy a 2001 Chevy F10 with, you know, and it was just specified right down to the floorboards of what they were going to buy. But of course, at the time, they didn't have enough money, and they didn't put enough money in. And now it's 15 years later, and there's no 2001 Chevy F10 you can buy anywhere. <laughs> and that was just a, not a good idea. So, so the point is that you know you do have to be specific, but you also have to leave yourself some flexibility. And again, the same concept when you're saying when you've got a budget. Don't zero something out. Leave a placeholder because you just never know what the flexibility you might need to allow the movement of dollars around as the select board can do. However, you do always have to say a state a specific amount. That is a necessary requirement for a legal appropriation. Um, so uh, for an appropriation to be legal, you have to have a public hearing. Uh, you have to disclose all purposes and amounts at the final public hearing. So when you're scheduled for your final public hearing for your municipal budget, all amounts have to be disclosed or discussed at the final public hearing. Now, theoretically, it's not a good idea per se, but it can happen that it, by necessity, the select board has to show up at that hearing and saying, we're changing this number. Mm -hmm. That's legal because it's discussed or disclosed at the final hearing. It doesn't have to be on the agenda noticed on the public hearing. Um, uh, we also have to have gross base budgeting. The total amount is raised and appropriated in the budget. There has to be uh, recommendations placed on the on the warrant, especially in SB2 towns. The recommendations are somewhat are very important. I don't know how it's done in Hampton, but there are many towns have actually stipulated that their select board and their budget committee will state how the vote went. So it's you know five in favor, two against, or yeah, whatever the case may be. Uh, there has to be warrant notice. That is, there has to be a notice. You know that the town meeting is going to meet on this day, and there has to be disclosure of the amounts that are going to be appropriated, and that's through the posting of the budget, the signed budget, which is signed by the, the budget committee for adoption by the town meeting. Um, 
The, the public hearing process typically you're taking place uh, in January, on or before the third Tuesday in January for a March SB2. Mm -hmm. So it's basically 25 days before a traditional town meeting. Again, it's held by the official budget committee at least seven days notice prior to the hearing. Mm -hmm. um, as we discussed at the budget hearing, all amounts to be appropriate have to be discussed or disclosed. No new amounts or purposes can be added um, uh, after the public hearing, um, and the Budget Committee uh, uh, can take suggestions or they cannot take suggestions, but it all has to be dealt with at the final budget hearing. Um, after the close of the budget hearing, no purposes can be added, uh, no increased amounts can be made, no new subject matter can be added to the budget. Now. That does not prevent the budget committee or the school board, I mean, the, the, the governing body of the school board, to reduce an amount in a, in a separate warrant article. And I've seen that happen more than once, where the school board says, okay, well, A, in my town, the school board just decided at the last second, no, we're not going to do with that warrant article. They're going to take it off the warrant. They have that authority. Um, uh, I know there was some discussion um, in one town where what, what was it legal for the school board or the budget committee or school board or the governing body to take off the budget a warrant article and I'm afraid that's legal they didn't add anything they just took an article off they decided that it was not prudent to go forward with that proposed approach that wasn't a petition though no it wasn't no. a petition article it was an article by the right. by yeah. the, uh, the it was the school board deciding not to put money in the capital reserve fund they just not decided to take it off the warrant um, Public hearing also applies to petition warrant articles. So if someone petitions a warrant article, um, that's something that the budget committee has to opine on and have a hearing on. By the way, I, I would just mention that one of the things that came up at my budget hearing a couple of years ago is was it appropriate for the budget <coughs> committee to have a hearing on and give a recommendation on a non-money warrant article? And it was a tricky issue because I don't know if you're aware of this, but the school boards now have the authority to have um, uh, to retain funds. You know, it used to be a school board had to turn over all dollars they hadn't spent. They now have a statute that allows the school board to retain a certain amount of money, uh, just like a town has an unreserved sun, sun balance. The school boards can do the same thing. So we had an article on the warrant proposed. That, uh, that has to be approved by the town meeting. And the question was, should the budget committee give an opinion about that? And I said, no, we're not touching that because that is just not our job. Our job is only to give opinions on money articles, not, you know, issues. And that's a kind of a, could be a controversial political issue. Um, uh, the budget committee, as I said, finance, uh, finalizes the budget at the close of the public hearing. And this is done at a public meeting. And I, you know how you do it, but at, at all the, the town meetings that went on for the three town meetings and school district meeting was I was on the budget committee. I was only on for one term. At the end of our budget hearing, our final budget hearing, the town manager or the finance director for the town or the business manager for the school would walk over to each budget committee member and we would be signing the budget so that it could get all posted on time. So we typically dealt with it at the final budget hearing. Um, so you have to post the budget at least 14 days before the meeting. I think that's slightly different for SB2. Um, and the forwarding of the budget from the budget committee to the school board at least 20 days before the meeting. Again, we typically signed it after the end of the public hearing uh, in the town that I was in. Um, again, posting of the warrant and budget, traditional 14 days before the meeting, include all appropriations. And this is important, DRA will, DRA will invalidate any mm -hmm. not listed appropriation. Um, so a few examples of gross basis budgeting. This is an example where the town's going to raise an appropriate $25,000 to replace a wooden play structure at the playground. The total replacement cost is $35,000, but $5,000 will be withdrawn from the playground capital reserve fund, and the selectman have received a commitment for a donation for a remaining $5,000. The problem with this is no gross amount appropriated. It really should have said to see if the town will raise an appropriate $35,000. And that's the, the real solution to articles like this. You can have multiple sources of the dollars, but you still have to state the bottom line total amount of the appropriation. Um, again, gross basis budgeting. And this is the example I gave you before to see if the town will raise an appropriate the 215 Ford F2 4x4 truck with friendly Ford sales in Ford of New Hampshire. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's just going to be a problem if they don't have them. You know, what are you going to do? So you really just have to say to see the town raise an appropriate 
And by the way, there's no specific dollar amount there either. So it should have said to see if the town would raise an appropriate $35,000 to buy a pickup truck or a dump truck for the public works department uh, without specifying the source of the vendor, et cetera. Um, another example to see if the town will create the position of the athletic director to coordinate the activities of youth athletic leagues. This is a part-time voluntary position. Now, someone moves at the town meeting, this is a part-time position with a salary of $20,000, which amount is hereby raised and appropriated. Well, the problem is the first warrant article is fine, but what happened is that on the floor of the town meeting, they put in money which was not noticed to the public. Yeah. You can't add dollars that weren't there before. You can increase or decrease the amount, but you can't just all of a sudden turn an article with no money in it and say we're going to now raise money through that warrant article. So DRA would disallow the failure to give notice of that proposed appropriation. Um, frankly, if they'd left it alone, the select boards, I suppose, could have found a place to fund it. So the, the evil of this particular one was failure to appropriate a sum certain. Um, so gross-based gross budgeting, again, continuing on that subject. There are such things as special warrant articles, which are defined by 32.3. Special warrant articles are petitioned appropriations, bond issues, monies into or out of, into or out of capital reserve, it's designated as special and non-lapsing, and recommendation is required. I think the key thing to keep in mind with um, special warrant articles is that they have specific period of times that they lapse. And one key uh, thing to keep in mind is that a special warrant article will not lapse, uh, uh, will lapse in the fiscal year it's appropriated unless the select board votes to encumber the money for an additional one year before the end of the fiscal year. So I had a call from a town the other day where they said, oh, we did raise an appropriate uh, by separate warrant article, a special warrant article, the money to do an energy audit for our town. And they said, do you think we could spend the money this year? And I said, well, that was 2014. Did the select board vote to encumber the funds before the end of your fiscal year? What was the end of your fiscal year? Oh, it was December of 2014. Well, did they vote to do that? No, but can they do that now? No, you can't do that now. You have to vote to encumber before the end of the fiscal year. And Steve, can I just add, with the, um, the, I think the other big thing about special articles, not to be confused with separate articles. You, there can be things that are voted on separately from the operating budget, but just because it's voted on separately doesn't mean it's one of these special articles. And the other thing I think that's important about special articles is that any money that is appropriated under any one of these special articles cannot be transferred to another purpose. So you can't transfer out of any article that is a special article. So if you had a petitioned article for $20,000 to do something and the voters approved it, and that project was going to cost $21,000, the selectman can transfer $1,000 in. But if that project comes out costing $19,000, they can't transfer that other $1,000 out. So that's the two pieces of that a special article is that um, it may not lapse. Uh, it, it can be carried over. It's one of those exceptions to the lapse rule. But the other thing is that it kind of locks it in. It can't be used for any other purpose. So I've already talked about recommendations. You know, this, the Budget Committee has to give a recommendation on se special warrant articles. And as I mentioned, uh, many towns have adopted a provision where uh, a numeric tally is required to show how the vote went. Uh, it is necessary for all separate and spe special and separate appropriation articles. Uh, and typically you'll see, you know, that the, the Budget Committee recommends the article, uh, et cetera, uh, by uh, a vote, et cetera, of 9 to 2 or 3 to 2 for the select board, as the case may be. So let's talk about the Budget Committee. Um, as we said, the Budget Committee is a, a, it can be officially established under 3214. Um, if it's elected, uh, that's an elected position. I was an elected Budget Committee member. And I won by the skin of my chinny chin chin. Uh, and I noticed that, that the only people who won stood at the polls all day with the signs because that's the only way you're going to prevail. And I beat the person who didn't stand there all day. So I <laughs> one election, uh, lesson I learned, you got to stand there all day. Um, the the uh, advisory budget committees um, can be typically appointed by the select board or they can be elected. 10% um, limitation does not apply for an advisory committee, uh, and the governing body's budget is posted instead of the budget committees if you've got an advisory budget committee. Um, now, the 
budget committee's job is to review current year's expenditures, review the proposal of the governing body, prepare the budget, schedule and hold the budget hearings, and fo forward final proposed budget to the governing body for posting with the warrant. Now, I'm aware that, you know, there are some questions about how does the budget committee here in Hampton um, gather information for your decision making about when you're uh, at the time that your budget is going to be proposed. You know, again, I all I would comment is, you know, I, it seems to me, um, you know, the town is pretty much just recently adopted the budget. Um, you certainly have the right, um, and we'll get into this, that the budget committee can ask that department heads come meet with you and discuss what's going on with the departments. But it seems to me, uh, again, from my experience, you know, the departments are just beginning to spend or ha are spending the dollars. They're about halfway through the fiscal year or your calendar year. And you really won't know the, the real lay of the land with regards to what's going to happen with the town's budget until, you know, they are asked. Because it really, you really should, I, my, my recommendation is wait for the process to take place. And again, typically you're going to be seeing the administration sometime in July or August send a memo to all the department heads saying, I want your budgets for the 2016 mm -hmm. fiscal year on my desk by August 15th. And, and that's when the, the, the budget committee, the town department heads will put their budgets together. And they're not even going to be thinking about their budgets until then. So if you ask a town department head to come in to see you in June, I mean, they're, they're not, that's just not on their radar screen. But when it is on their radar screen, you know, it makes sense. And, and it seems to me it's either at or about the time they submit their um, budget proposal to the town manager. Now, one thing I would say about the process we had in Bo, which I think worked out very well, the, the selectmen knew that the sooner the budget committee was knowledgeable about what was going on in the budget in Bo, the better. And so what the select board did every year, they had a system set up so that in usually at the end of September, they had two back-to-back -back Saturdays where every department would come in and explain their proposed budget. And they would, we would, you know, we, the fire department would come in, the police department, and they would all take an hour to go over their budget. And although this was intended to inform the select board on what budget they might eventually propose to the budget committee, the the select board realized, well, it's better for the select the budget committee to be there when we're meeting with the department heads, so they can gather the same information we're gathering, so that when they get the budget, they'll even be better informed. So that worked out great for us. Uh, and I, again, I don't know how they do it in Hampton, but it uh, seems to me, you know, that's what you should be thinking about in terms of when it, it makes sense for the, the budget committee to be involved in the budget process. Um, now, you will, will eventually review a budget proposal from the governing body. You will prepare a budget. I, honestly, I, I don't, I guess, when it says you prepare a budget, you know, you get this huge budget book with all these lines. I mean, I don't, I'm not sitting down with a separate set of Excel spreadsheets creating my own budget. I'm, I'm getting it from the finance director in this huge budget book, and I'm basically going through their book. Now, if you have the wherewithal to do your own Excel spreadsheets, you know, I, I suppose, but typically you're going to be working off their information sheets, and you're going to be digesting it to make a judgment as to whether or not you agree with all those numbers. That doesn't mean you couldn't suggest that it's an appropriate situation that if you see that the, there's a line item in the budget to have um, uh, eight recreation aides in the recreation department and you really think there should be ten, well, you can say, we think there ought to be ten. Or for that matter, if you think the police department's buying too many bullets, you can say, you know, cut, <laughs> cut down their budget on bullets. Or my big thing when I was on the budget committee was overtime. It was driving me crazy. The overtime budget, in the, in the, especially in the dispatch office, drove me absolutely loony. And I kept saying to the town manager, we need to have a different system so we don't have so much overtime. Why can't we have staff it up so we have people who are going to work full time rather than have a bunch of part timers who have huge amounts of overtime? But no one really listened to me. I'm not on the budget committee anymore. So uh, the municipal officials, administrative officials, prepare statements of an estimated expenditures, and they're submitted at such times and in such details the governing body may require. That's kind of the process. Um, the budget committee reviews those statements submitted to them, um, and they can submit their own recommendations to the budget at such time as the department heads the budget committee fixes. And they can also ask the department heads, um, you know, to come in and speak to them about estimated expenditures. And I would also agree it also makes sense to hear 
to, from the assessor. What's going on in the assessment systems? Where where are the numbers? Where do you stand in terms of you know how many uh, applications for abatements have you got? How many you know how many appeals? How much is in your overlay? You know all those other things that go into what's going on in the dollars and cents on, in the real estate market. That's those are legitimate inquiries. I don't think it's an unfair inquiry to have. Um, the governing body may, as you know, um, transfer dollars from appropriations from an unexpended balance to some other appropriation, and the but they have to keep record of those uh, transfers um, so that people can make sure the transfers are for a purpose which are appropriate. And uh, but ultimately, the budget committee really can't challenge those appropriation transfers. Uh, now you could, you know, if. You know, one of the challenges that could occur, and I've seen this before, where trustees of trust fund is asked to transfer money from a capital reserve fund to the budget committee or to the, to the selectmen for a purpose is not allowed, and the trustee is going to say, wait a minute, how are you asking for me to transfer money for uh, from the fire department capital reserve fund to spend money on a police car? So there would be appropriate judgments by the trustees of trust funds, and that certainly could be something raised by uh, the budget committee. But in the, ultimately, the decision to say, we're going to spend less on recreation this year. I'm going to put more into the plowing budget. That's up to the select board. That's just one of the ex exigencies that have to be handled when you're operating with the budget, a municipal budget, uh, during the fiscal year. Um, as I said, the authority of the budget committee is to prepare the budget under 32.5. You can confer. Uh, and I will emphasize it is true. Uh, it shall be the duty of all such officers and persons to furnish pertinent information to the budget committee. But at the same time, one thing I would also offer, because I know there's some discussion of this issue here in Hampton, that you know you have to do it with an understanding that the town still has to operate, and so there has to be some, you know, manner of transfer of information so that it doesn't interrupt the ordinary affairs of the municipal organization, but also fulfills the purpose that you have to investigate and understand what does the budget look like and what will it look like in the succeeding fiscal year. Um, as again, you, you conduct the public hearings and you final you forward your final copies of the budgets to the town clerk. Um, so the most important power the budget committee has to limit appropriations not by more than 10 percent of the total amount recommended by the budget committee. Now, one of the things, and there's a case on this I want to point out that a budget committee cannot do because there is a budget committee in Hudson that tried this one year. They automatically reduce the budget by 10 percent below. Uh, the previous year's budget, specifically for the purpose of preventing from people raising it by 10 percent. So they cut it by 10 percent automatically. After the amount, they had already had a discussion, we will agree to this budget. And then they said, okay, now we're going to take that budget, we're going to reduce it by 10 percent. And there's actually a case that says a budget committee cannot do that. That's improper. Now that there was a budget committee, and I don't know what town it was in recently, where there was an argument about that budget committee doing that. I want to say it was Sandborn, uh, Sand, Sandown, maybe. No. Uh, was that? No. Sandown, where the, and there was a case on it, and and the Sandown budget committee was found to have acted consistent with the law, not contrary to this one case. And I, I would love to be able to recite the particulars to you. But if in your inquiry you send me a request for that case, I'd be happy to send it to you. Because it does help better understand what is the authority of the Budget Committee and what they can and cannot do with regards to you know, that 10 percent limitation. Um, so what else goes on the ballot? Uh, only things that are required, nothing extra. The actual questions and recommendations. There is a provision now where you can uh, put a tax rate impact if that's been adopted by the legislative body. Understand that if the legislative body says we want a tax rate impact put on each warrant article, um, the amount of the estimate is by the governing body, not by the budget committee. So that number, which could be debated, and I've seen it at a town meeting where someone says, wait a minute, that, that estimated tax rate, that's incorrect. It's somebody who's an accountant who's in the, uh, in the, in the meeting and they say that number is wrong. And, and the, 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 you could li politely listen to them, but the bottom line is the moderator should say, "Well, that's interesting, but it's the budget, it's the select board's job to decide what's going to be on the tax rate impact, the number." Um, finally, the the warrant notice is another key concept. Uh, you can't have a valid appropriation without notice in the warrant of what's going to be appropriated. Uh, the appropriations only valid if appears in the warrant. Um, you can't add new purposes or light items from the floor of the town meeting. So if you don't have 
um, a, uh, a line item for books in your <laughs> budget. You can't add it on the floor of the town meeting, but if you had a line item for $10, you know, you could add it, but you would ultimately with a budget, you add it to the bottom line, not to the specific line. Um, <coughs> voters may amend from the floor, both in traditional and deliberative session, although the ability to amend from the floor in an SB2 town is somewhat limited. Now, you, you can't eliminate the subject matter of, a, of an article, mm -hmm. uh, and there's some debate of what does eliminate the subject matter mean. Our position is it basically means you can't take an article that says the see if the town would raise an appropriate $10,000 for a new playground equipment and just change it to to see. Yeah, that's just taking the subject away. Um, the, the proposed budget is ultimately advisory only in terms of all of its line. It's the bottom line that counts. Um, the voters cannot later restrict, restrict transfers. The transfer authority remains with the governing body. Um, the, you can generally alter the mode of funding, although uh, if you, with a capital reserve fund, um, DRA will not let you name agents to expend from the floor of the town meeting. So if you have a warrant article that says, see if the town will create a, a fire truck capital reserve fund and put $100,000 into it, someone can't add at the floor of the town meeting and to name the select board as agents to expend. They will disallow that. Um, and. Uh, you, you can't appropriation of capital reserve amended to accomplish a purpose during that fiscal year. They're going to say they, they will take the position that that's an appropriation should be a separate article to appropriate funds. So they can, you can't change an appropriation that's going to capital reserve and say instead. So if there was an article to see if the town would raise an appropriate hundred thousand dollars <coughs> to put it into the fire truck capital reserve fund, you can't change that to to see if the town would just spend hundred thousand dollars a new fire truck because that's changing a warrant article from saving to spending, and that would also be disallowed. And the other thing that we always talk about on warrant notice is the state home rule. If, if Martha, Aunt Martha would have changed her mind about the fact that you're going to spend money buying a, a pickup truck rather than the backhoe that she thinks you really need to fit the culvert in front of her, her house, that would be a state home rule. She would have showed up to vote for the, the, the backhoe, but you've changed it now with pickup truck, and that's kind of the stay at home rule. Um, in a traditional meeting, voters can actually table an article. They can say, we're going to pass over that. We're not going to address it. You can't do that, SB2. All articles that are on the warrant must be put to the ballot for voting. You can't, under SB2, like I said, eliminate the subject matter. Um, and make it a nullity, you can freely amend the dollar amounts up and down within the 10% limitation. On the bottom line. On the bottom line, thank you. Uh, and there's no spending without an appropriation, another key concept. You can't spend money uh, unless there's been appropriated for that purpose, which requires a town or district vote. Uh, it could include non-tax revenue, such as, you know, money that comes in, although it's tax money, uh, from the uh, uh, annual uh, highway uh, block grant. There are exceptions to the no spending without an appropriation rule. Um, legal judgments, <laughs> it'd be nice to think, well, okay, we're not going to pay that $100,000 judgment, which we're not going to appropriate the money. Well, uh, uh, the courts in the legislature figured that one out a long time ago. That will work. Uh, you're going to have to pay that judgment. Uh, you can get DRA permission to overspend. Uh, the bottom line, and that's particularly can occur, I think it happened with a number of towns in 2006 with the Mother's Day flood where the towns had to actually get permission from DRA to spend for emergency purposes. Uh, you might have a prior mandate from a federal or state government, um, and uh, there is the ability to transfer dollars within um, an appropriation, so you can transfer funds from the rec department to the plowing budget. Um, Obviously, for a town that has a fiscal, uh, a calendar year budget, you don't adopt your budget until March, and so you're spending from January to March dollars that are technically not appropriate. The statute recognizes that, but those dollars that are spent between January 1st and the date of appropriation have to be reasonable in terms of what was spent last year for the same amounts. But technically, you are spending without an appropriation. And Congress does it all the time, so whatever. Um, uh, so there's more exceptions. You can have unanticipated revenue. So this is, you know, a bond, a, 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 a private uh, grant or a state grant 
3195B, you can have dollars spent without an appropriation. Capital reserve and trust funds are also spending without technically an appropriation, but those were previously appropriated dollars. Town meeting 10 years ago said we're going to spend money on the, S on the uh, Chevy F10 truck, uh, and you can spend those dollars later on if you can find one. Uh, there are other funds that are out there that where dollars are spent. Not uncommon for a town to have a conservation fund where dollars are uh, allocated from your land use change tax, and so dollars are spent by the Conservation Commission to buy land or easements with the select board's approval. You have sewer water reserves that are separate spending accounts, and some towns have revolving funds. In my town, we have a revolving fund for recreation fees, and that was one of the other things I was always pushing for. Let's get the rec department totally self-funded so that it's all funded by uh, ex the fees people pay for classes. We're not there yet. We're almost at 85 percent, but it would be nice to be 100 percent. Um, so as we've said, if you're out of money, now what? Again, we can transfer dollars. Um, you can appropriate dollars if you accept and expend anticipated funds. You can ask for DRA permission to overspend the budget. You can go to special town meeting. I have petitioned on three separate occasions for permission to hold a special town meeting to raise and appropriate money. Um, I have gotten every one of those petitions granted. Um, but it's a lot different today than it was back in the 1990s. I think it would be very difficult, given the way the statute is worded, to show that you really have a true emergency that requires special town meeting. But you can do it. 31 colon 5, 30, 5 sets about, about the process, and you have to find a Superior Court judge who agrees with you. Um, so there are other ways in which you can have spending without an appropriation. Technically, when you have uh, collective bargaining agreement, it's really not a spending without an appropriation. It's a spending where, under this, and the concept is, and this comes from a, a case called the Appeal of Town of Sanborn, you Sanborn a, Sanbornize a contract. That is, the collective bargaining agreement says that the cost items for this, for this collective bargaining agreement, usually it's a three-year agreement, is X for year one, X for year two, and Y for year three. Um, as long as you disclose to the legislative body the full fiscal impact of a multi-year contract, you can sanbernize, this is the term of art we use, the, the agreement, and the town meeting can bind a future town meeting. <coughs> town meetings normally can't do that, but the Supreme Court has made clear in this case, yes, it can do it. You can have multi-year agreements uh, for equipments. You buy equipment with an escape clause, and if you don't appropriate the money in the future, you turn the equipment back which, by the way, I have never seen happen. I don't know who is going to turn back a partially used fire truck, but <laughs> theoretically you can have that, and you can have other multi-year contracts. Now, one that's come up a lot, which I haven't figured out the answer to, there's a lot of um, uh, energy companies are going to town saying, we want to sell you on a long-term contract a certain amount of electricity at a set price. And the problem we face is that I can't sanbornize that contract. And the reason why is, I can certainly agree to buy electricity at a set price, but I can't disclose to the taxpayers the financial impact of that because we don't know how much electricity the town of Hampton or Bow is going to need in two or three years. And in order to figure out how much money they're going to spend, you not only need the rate, you need the amount of electricity. So it's hard to make that full disclosure that's required under the sanbornization of a contract. So. Uh, those, I think you're going to be more and more are going to be induced or, or lured or whatever you want to say into trying to get into multi-year agreements. Uh, and, and particularly in the energy sector, it's going to be more common. Uh, and it may be that there, be a, there might be a need for legislative changes to allow towns to exercise those kind of options. Um, so uh, lapse of appropriations, all appropriations lapse at the end of the year. Uh, unspent money goes into the fund balance. It must be appropriated again, or it can be used to reduce the following year's tax rate, or it's retained for emergencies. Um, the fund balance is made up of unexpended appropriations, excess revenues, uncollected taxes, and liabilities. Uh, DRA recommends a retained fund balance of 5 to 15 percent, or 8 to 17 percent of general fund operating expenditures. Um, again, back to the lapse of appropriations, uh, encumbered funds um, uh, will lapse depending upon the time period that the board might select. One thing I would say about bonds, once you raise an appropriate money by bond and indebtedness, 
That's a permanent potential encumbrance. That is, mm -hmm. you've agreed to see if the town raise and appropriate $10 million for the construction of a wastewater treatment system. That goes on forever as an ability of the, of the governing body to spend those dollars. But you can dial that back with a subsequent Article 2, either cut back the amount approved or rescind the bond appro uh, approval that the town meeting granted. Um, capital reserve funds go on. Uh, as long as the capital reserve is remains or is not re uh, rescinded by the town meeting. You can have trust funds which are created for expendable purposes. Many towns have expendable trust funds they've used for spending for such things as health insurance. You can have, like I said, we've talked about special revenue funds. There's one in particular not mentioned here. There's a special revenue fund also used for recreation, same idea where the dollars that flow in from class uh, fees are used to fund the recreation department. Uh, there are other, as we've already mentioned, these uh, non-lapsing funds, conservation, sewer, water fund. Impact fees are also an off-budget item. So if you have an impact fee system, we are charging developers their fair share cost of uh, improvements to capital infrastructure caused by their particular project. You could have an impact fee. And we've already talked about the recreation revolving fund. Um, we talked about the transfer of appropriations by the town meeting. You can't do it out of special warrant articles. You have to keep a record of those transfers. You still can't overexpend the bottom line. Um, this that case recently came up that is worthy of reading by budget committee members that it affirms the uh, governing body's unfettered authority to transfer. And I see it does involve the town of Hampton. Right there. <laughs> so, oh, there it is. So there, your town is right there in black and white in our PowerPoint. Um, uh, now there is a, a transfer appropriations. You can have a situation where uh, the voters decide to say an article not adopted, this is true, uh, a failed separate water article mean, no means no. And I had this question, one of the first questions I had, I'm going to speed up a little bit, Barbara, no, I'm sorry. Uh, one okay. of the first questions I had when I came to the legal advisory service, they called up and then they said, well, the town had a separate warrant article to see if the town raised and appropriate $10,000, uh, actually it was $25,000 to install new IT infrastructure in the town. I said, okay, what happened? It was defeated. And I said, well, you can't spend any money for IT infrastructure during the following fiscal year because that's the net effect of that being defeated. And then next, the next statement was, well, but the town administrator just went out to Staples and bought a, a router. And I said, <laughs> okay. Where? And then I said, well, is there another place in the budget where that could be placed? Well, not really. And was this intended to be part of the infrastructure that was going to be built to enhance your IT infrastructure? Yes. And she just went and bought it anyway? I said, okay, well, I don't, I just said, no, that's not good. So that's, that's a problem. And that's the kind of thing that this can create. And, and, it, and it does, it is an issue, but there are a number of towns that are very leery about putting articles on the warrant, separate warrant articles, mm -hmm. because they know, well, okay, I want to get it passed, but what if it gets defeated? Yeah. I can't spend money for that purpose. So it does create some inhibition on governing bodies to put certain things in separate warrant articles. Um, and, and you can zero out a line in your budget. I've just never seen it, you know, because I think what we're talking about is zeroing out a line item. You're talking about zeroing out a whole department. Now, could you imagine if someone, you know, the town meeting said we're going to zero out the line item for the police department? Uh, it, it would be chaotic. Um, so I've never seen it, but um, I think the biggest impact I've seen is with these separate warrant articles that get defeated. That's really where no mean no has real impact. Um, so finally, just again reminding you about the budget cycle. Um, you have the preparation of the, the budget, presentation to the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee. It goes to the town meeting, presentation of voters, adoption of the budget. And then you have the monitoring of revenues, expenditures, and events and experiences. So that's the entire circle of life here it's in the financial. <laughs> it never stops.